In a previous video, we took a look at mathematical operations in Java, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, modulo, and then the binary operations where we can do a plus equal, minus equal, multiplication equal, or division equal if we simply want to modify an existing number by adding, subtracting to it, so on and so forth. In this video, we're going to take a look at one subject that requires a video all of its own, and that is increment and decrement. It ends up many times in programming, we need to simply add one to a number or subtract one from a number. Uh, a lot of times we'll have a counter variable or something of that, light, of that nature. So we have a shortcut for this where we can use the plus plus operator or the minus minus operator to add or subtract from a number. To be honest, though, this gets unusually complicated when you combine this plus plus operator or minus minus operator with an assignment statement. Uh, and that's those are some examples I want to walk through. One forewarning here is that this video is really talking about how to understand a program that was written to be more complicated than it should be. I would not recommend that you write a program to be more complicated than it should be. To be honest, I would uh, a lot of times separate mathematical functions into different lines instead of trying to combine them all into one line because that's where things get confusing. All of that being said, inevitably you're going to end up working with software that somebody else wrote. And you might see things that weren't necessarily written to best practice, which is why I want to review some examples. Let's start. So I've started a simple a simple file here called math examples and I'm just going to make this a very simple program where we can try a couple things out. So let's start by initializing some local variables. Remember what initialize means. Initialize means to declare a variable by giving it a name and a variable type. And a local variable means that it is declared within a method which means it's only alive within a method where a field or attribute would be declared within a class but not within a method and would be alive for every method within that class. So we're just going to declare some local variables. I'm going to say int red equals 50. I'm going to say int barn equals 100. Okay, now note that these need to be ints, not strings, because we're doing math on them. We're adding one or subtracting one as needed. Now I'll simply say SOUT and tab to expand that to system out print line. And I'm going to say red plus red and then barn. And then we'll say plus barn. And this is something that we're going to see. I'm going to put this system out print line in several places so we can watch when values change. So for example, I'll do one right after another here, uh, but then we'll do some mathematical operations. Now, what if I said red plus plus barn? plus plus. Those two lines are legitimate lines all by themselves. Note that I'm terminating it with a semicolon because we have to terminate all of our lines in Java with a semicolon with the exception of a method signature as we see here where we actually have an open curly close curly or a for loop or if test or do while loop which we haven't seen any of those yet so don't worry about those. All other lines though we want to terminate with the semicolon. So these two lines are valid by themselves because essentially what we're doing is we're saying red equals red plus one. We're just writing it in a shorter form on line 23. These two lines 23, 24 are doing the exact same thing. As a matter of fact red plus equals one is also the same. All three of these lines are equivalent and will have the same operation. Let me go ahead and get rid of these lines that are uh, things that we've already seen. And we're just going to say red plus plus and barn plus plus. I'm going to save and I'm going to play. And I want, to, I want you to think to yourself what the first system out print line is going to say and then what the next system out print line is going to say. So let's go ahead and play. We see the first system out print line shows the variables at their initial values, 50 and 100. The next one, 51 and 101. So as you might suspect, it took these initial numbers and added one to them and then printed them out. If I were writing a program, this is how I would write it. I would do each of these operations on a separate line. Some people want to get a little cute and want to put multiple things on one line. And, and, and there again, that's what I want to talk about. Uh, before we get to that, though, I want to show a few different permutations of this operator. 
In addition to putting the plus plus on the end, you can put the plus plus at the beginning, like so. And in this case, you'll get the same result. So I'm going to go ahead and save and play again. And we should see red uh, 50 barn 100 and red 51 barn 100 after running that first time. No surprise there. Okay, the plus plus, there's a similar operator called a decrement operator, which is minus minus. And that simply means subtract one from this number. So let me change it to minus minus and play. And there you see it is subtracted one, 50 and 100 becomes 49 and 99. Now, just like uh, this, which we call the post-decrement operator, there's also a pre-decrement operator, which means you can put the minus minus before the variable, and essentially, in this case, get the same result. 50, 100, 49, 99. Now, here's where things get a little bit different. What if we combine the increment operator with the assignment operator? In other words, what if we say this, barn equals red, plus plus, what behavior do we get? In other words, what's the order of operations? Does it add one to red and then assign it to barn? Or does it assign the value in red to barn? And then after that, does it increment the value that's in red? Let's find out. So if we know that at the end of the day, red is gonna be 51. We know that for sure. By line 27, red is gonna be 51. The question is, does it assign the number 50 to barn? or does it assign the number 51 to barn? Barn's not gonna be 100 because notice, even though we are declaring and initializing it on line 20, we are reassigning it on line 24, and therefore whatever its initial value was is irrelevant because that's getting overwritten, or in other words, reassigned here on line 24. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna save, run again, and you see that red is 51, barn is 50. In other words, it assigned the value from red to barn first, then it incremented the value in red by one. Okay, let's try it again with the pre-increment operator. So let's put the plus plus before red. Now what's gonna happen? Take a mental screen capture of this right here. Remember that red is 51 and barn is 50. So let me save, that was with the post-increment by the way, now we do the pre-increment. Let me save and run again with the pre-increment and you see now the order has changed. Now it, it, it added one to red before it did the assignment to barn. Then it assigned red to barn after red was already incremented. So you see now red is 51 and barn is 51. It, mut it mutated the value of red before it did the assignment to barn. We'll see a similar approach when we use the decrement operator. If I say red minus minus and I save, uh, let's go ahead and play this again, and what we're going to see is it's going to take the 50 from red, assign it to barn, and then after that it's going to subtract 1 from the value from red, making it 49. Sure enough, red is 49, barn is 50, because it did the assignment first, and then it did the decrement. Let's move the decrement operator. Instead of post-decrement, let's make it pre-decrement and save. And what's going to happen now? Now it's going to subtract one from red first, and then after subtracting one from red, it's going to assign that new value to barn. Both will be 59. I'm sorry, 49. And sure enough, you see both are 49. So if the line is standalone, like red plus plus, it doesn't matter if the plus plus comes before or after. That's irrelevant. Uh, these two things, 23 and 24, are just the same. The only time it makes a difference is when you combine this operator, this minus minus operator, with an assignment statement. Then it makes a difference whether the operator is, is before the variable or after the variable. This is great material for a quiz question suggestion, so think about how we might use this uh, in maybe a multiple choice quiz question suggestion. Here again, my recommendation would be not to combine the increment decrement operator with an assignment. My recommendation would be if you want the increment or decrement to run first, let's say you want it to run first, put it on the line before, and then do the assignment. You see, with this operation that we have here, it's very clear what's going to happen. Line 24 is going to execute. We're going to decrement red by 1. Line 25 is going to execute. We're going to take what's in red, 
and we're going to assign it to bar. Very clear what's going to happen there. Similarly, it's very clear what's going to happen here. We're first going to assign the value in red to bar, and then we're going to subtract one from red. I prefer that much better than putting it all in one line because to me that's much more readable. But here again, other people are going to prefer this way. And I just want you to understand what's going to happen there because it's easy to make a logic error if you don't realize the difference between the decrement and the increment operator. So I hope this video has been valuable to you. Uh, we'll, we'll see a, a few future videos that are going to talk about some other common syntax errors. That's a good one if you're starting on the first programming assignment. And a few other videos on objects and classes. I look forward to seeing you then.